competition. That was March 18th, I think. Uh, we had several winners there. We want to tell you about the winners. You saw the guys there. They were the state winners. Donna Smith, she won in short story. Is Donna here? She's way in the back, I think. She's right there. <laughs> Stephen Rizzo, she, he won for poem. Stephen Rizzo. Uh, men's Ensemble, uh, Cheryl, that's me, on keyboard. Um, Next Generation Choir for choir. And uh, second place uh, in art was Randy Suchi. He, he uh, came in second. So we had a great time that day. We had a great time getting ready for that and go into that, uh, go into that uh, competition. Sarah's sending me signals. <laughs> She's telling Cheryl she's number one, she, and I know Sarah did that, but she... <laughs> no, we talked about the senior choir. We, we, we all know we want to give honor to Ken and Jim Roach because they were the ones who first organized the High Praise Choir, the original senior choir from which we kind of bounced off of. Yeah, who's here tonight that was in there? I know Larry Jordan. Stand Jones. up if you were in the original, original choir. High Praise Choir. Everybody stand up. Come on, stand up. Wait, come on, guys. Stand up. These guys went a lot of places. Um, all over the South. And they went, they went to, yeah. um, Ken and June, this was their vision. And we're just carrying that on. We couldn't even be here if it wasn't. Yeah, that there. was started in 1999 by yeah. Ken and June. And for all those years. And really, the only thing, I guess, that kind of shut it down at first was COVID, which shut yeah. everything down. And, and then, of course, you know, Ken had a stroke. And that just kind of was debilitating to him. June was his caregiver. And and we've lost both of them, and we want to honor them tonight, and Pam, uh, and Danny Gilliland, Pam Roach Gilliland, she's here, she's a member of this choir, she's a member of the Ladies Ensemble. Uh, we appreciate them for all they did. They paved the way for us. Well, we want to, uh, we, we talked about Kelly Turner a while ago, and, and we want her to come, because she has had, she has a special, a real special song for us tonight. So come on, Kelly.
simply says he still speaks. <coughs>
Oh
Raise your hand. Pam Gilliland, raise your hand. Yeah. Did she hear us? Raise your hand, Pam. This is uh, Ken and June's daughter that we talked about a while ago that uh, her, her mom and dad are Ken and June Roach. So she's a great singer. She's been in youth choir. She's been in adult choir. Now she's in senior choir. <laughs> All right. Well, before we show you, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time? Are you enjoying it? Amen.
pretty amazing. Uh, uh, we told you we got some special guests tonight, and, and this is not making fun, so everything we're doing tonight, except what Pastor Kennedy is very serious. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give a good applause to the Happy Goodman family. All right, come on.
have Cher, and you have Beyonce, and you have Pitbull, and, and all you gotta do is say one, one yeah, she's just got one everybody one knows who she is. So, you know, she uh, she's not far from around, she's around this area, she has gotten, she's really big. She's really big. In, big, big. She's really big in Cordova. She's yeah, really yeah, big. Yeah, Cordova area, uh, Big Ten, down that way. Oh, Big Ten, they love her down there. Okay, let's hear from Bertha. Bertha!
Which now they met this in our family. They met our family. We heard here about this jubilee. We know it was going to be good because Sarah was involved and it had all this singing and we like music. That's why we named our dog Ray Charles because we like music. <laughs> so we was down there and we decided to pack Johnny's truck up and here we go. We start heading down the river. And we got that music turned way up. We are singing and dancing. You know that dancing you do in a car. Just do your arm like that. <laughs> well, that's what we was doing. And I don't know why I thought stop this getting in my head, y'all. I guess I was just born this way. But I saw this railroad track coming up. When we get to the middle of that railroad track, and I holler, Dream! Just as loud as I could yell. Well, I thought Johnny was going to jump off the car. I mean, he jumped so big it scared him to death. So we get across that road. I'm just laughing. He ain't laughing. We get across that railroad track and I look over there at him. He ain't got no blood in his body. He is as pale. He looks like a ghost. And he wasn't laughing and I know, uh-oh, I done done it again. <laughs> so that's all he said. He said, why'd you do that? And I said, well, I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny. He didn't say another word. I mean, not another word. He turned that radio off. We go down that road, and I could feel it coming on him. I turned my back to him, just laughing. I'm trying not to let him see me, just laughing. And you know when you do that inside laughing and tears roll down your eyes? I'm just a swapping them tears, thinking, well, he's going to think, I'm crying because he's mad at me. That's what he's going to think. I'm just a crying. Well, we took this exit. And I thought, well, he needs him a little walkabout. Because to be honest, when we go on a trip, he has to take a walkabout because he says we talk too much and he has to get himself together. <laughs> so we passed all these service stations. He didn't stop. That's where he usually does his walkabouts. He didn't stop at none of them. I wanted to ask him real bad, where are we going? But I wouldn't say a word because he wasn't saying a word. Well, next thing I know, we pulled up at a bus station. <laughs> and I thought, well, what was he with here? And I just kind of looked at him and he goes, get out. <laughs> That's what I did. I laughed. I thought, this is a good one. He's finally learning. He's going to do good. And I turned around and looked at him again, just all smiling. And he said, I said, get out. So I did what he said. I got out the car. He reached over there, rolled that window down, handed me my pocketbook, and drove off. <laughs> well, I thought, he's serious. And I was just out there just laughing. Because he had done so good. I told him so good. Well, after about 10 or 15 minutes, I was like, I'm at a bus station. He done gave me my pocketbook. He ain't coming back. <laughs> so I went there and I bought me a ticket to get here because I know he's going to be here. So I get on that bus and I get to thinking, you know, Johnny's getting on elderly in age. I could have <laughs> given him a heart attack when I did all that yelling. I got to feeling real bad. So I come up here tonight to try to find him. And I believe he's hiding from me because I ain't found him nowhere. I've been looking all day. All I wanted to do was tell him I was sorry. See, y'all that know him, if y'all see him, y'all tell him I said I'm so sorry. And that if he'll just let me ride home in his truck, I will never hold a train on a train track again. Because <laughs> if he don't take me home, I don't know how I'm going to get home. Anyway, I'm going to go look for him. Y'all enjoy the rest of this. And thing. they're going to sing for you tonight. Let's make them well. We, um, we've, we're not normally, we've sung this three times, so y'all bear with us, but I gotta tell you a true story since we're talking about the Goodmans. Uh, my family grew up where the Goodmans were. They, 
they were really close. They grew up during the Depression together. As a matter of fact, my uncle married Gussie Goodman, and they had a child, and it was Labriska Hemphill. Y'all probably have heard of the singing Hemphills. So, but true story is that Howard liked my mother before he did Vestal. And so many times I said, why did you stay with him? I could have been famous singer. <laughs> she said he had grubby hands, whatever that means. She didn't like him. But it's a known fact when the Goodmans came to visit, they didn't leave. They didn't leave, and as a matter of fact, my grandmother told the story for years. She, they came up, and their cars would break down, and they'd stay for days. You couldn't get rid of them. And my grandmother had just fried this beautiful chicken that she was so proud to get, which you knew that, that was really special. And they pulled up one day right when my grandmother had fried that chicken, and she said that my grandmother was a Pentecostal saint. She said, Lord Jesus, y'all hide the chicken. There's the good ones. <laughs> so we're going to sing one of their songs tonight. Y'all can sing along with us. Thank you. 
I think y'all can know this one too.
Ready to go home?